they basically said to me, I'm sorry, the cancer team has gone home for the night. Could you please come back on Monday? And the whole world stopped at that second. I just remember sitting on that table, you know, bare-breasted with no options. All of a sudden they're talking to me and their voices became very much like a Peanuts cartoon. Wah, wah, wah. And all I could think about at that minute was when I was in college, I read an excerpt from a book by Norman Cousins called Anatomy of an Illness. And in that book, he talks about using comedy and laughter and humor and play to help him through his disease. So all I could think about was get to the video store, get every stand-up comedy tape that you can find, get home, get your daughter to bed, and watch comedy. I was sitting in this exact chair when the doctor called me. I was waiting for his call. It was about six hours late. And um, just by the tone of his voice, I could tell it wasn't good. He said it was malignant, and it was a big growth, and I needed to get to a radiologist immediately. And he said, please, I'm here for you, whatever you can do. And I hung up the phone, and I sank back in this chair, and I went, wow, this can't be. I think stress is an incredible factor in leading to your immune system breakdown, which makes you vulnerable for many kinds of cancers or many kinds of diseases. I mean, look at the word disease. It's dis-ease. So what does stress cause you? or And what causes that stress? Dis-ease. And I had so much dis-ease in my life in 1993 when I thought I had uh, originally had cancer and then leading through those six years those stressors just kept mounting so I personally do believe that stress extreme stress is one of the factors I also think anger extreme anger and suppressed anger can also really set you up to be vulnerable for something like cancer no time for crying, no time for disbelief or denial. I have it, I gotta get rid of it, and I gotta move on, because Rob Greenberg doesn't have time for this. That was my mindset. Never in, in crossed my mind that I wasn't gonna beat it. So Norman Cousins um, was a professor at UCLA he also was an author and an editor of the Saturday Review. And he was diagnosed with a rare nerve disease and his disease, there was one in 500 cure. So he wasn't curing. And what he realized was that he had to do something dramatically different in his care in order to survive. So under his doctor's supervision, he checked himself out of the hospital in California and went to like, um, like a hotel close by the hospital with nursing care. And the doctors would still visit him. But what he did was experiment with his emotions, releasing negative emotions, but also laughing every day consistently. And what he found was that when he laughed rigorously and and in the course of his day, he didn't feel as much pain. And we now know that's because when you laugh, the body produces endorphins, similar to when you run. You know, they call it a runner's high. Well, something very similar happens in the body when you laugh. We also know that now through all the research and science, that when you laugh, you reduce your negative stress hormones and you increase your positive stress hormones. We know that laughing also has impact on certain cells that are very critical within your immune system, particularly in terms of cancer, these killer cells. Just left. that's what kept me going because I said that nothing's gonna beat me, so my hair falls out. I, would, I can't tell you how many times I got stuck with a needle. Hundreds, or maybe a hundred. And I would just, when I got the needle, I would just laugh. I would just, you had to, what else are you gonna do? And so I'm like, I found humor in everything. You know, I got 
constipation or hemorrhoids or a nosebleed. The only option is to be sad or cry. So I just laughed. And, and Saren had told me, he says, you need to find time to laugh and, and make uh, lemonade out of lemons. That's what I did. Do you want to say or do you want me just to have it? Come on, Jesse, for me, for Frank. Sure. That's picture should be up here. Will you tell me in my ear? And then, uh, no, no, hold on. You tell me in my ear? That's my favorite joke. That's my favorite joke. Okay. Ready? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? No. Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good job! Good job! You guys are from Disney. I love Good. that joke! Oh, I love that joke! When you laugh, your body, mind, and spirit get the positive impact, the positive vibration of that release of that cleansing of that internal giggle so an external giggle so just do it i wake up in the morning and my heat my feet hit the floor and it's a good day i don't care if it's raining or snowing or i have a terrible meeting that day that's not going to be fun it doesn't matter it's every day's an experience literally i mean you could say it but you walk the walk after you go through something like this and you find joy in little things and th that helps you lighten your day. And when through Saren, one of Saren's uh, people, uh, an energy healer, she taught me just to breathe more, deep breathing throughout the day. And any little thing that may be a stressor or a, or a source of aggravation or anxiety, just drop it. Can we try with your toes? Do you want to jump over your toes? <laughs> Let's see. Can your toes jump? Toes People at Sloan and my doctor, um, the Western medical community, if you will, they're very good at what they do. Um, they prescribe very expensive drugs and very special, expensive surgeries, and they do them well. And they help mitigate the cancers or whatever they do. But in my mind, they're not really looking for a cure. They like it just the way it is. They do cancer companies and the research facilities and the cancer centers and the drug, the pharmaceuticals, that they like it just the way it is because they make a ton of money off of it. So I don't think anybody in that community is really motivated for a cure. They just like to maintain and keep everything in check. They don't recognize cancer diets. They don't recognize herbs. Um, they tell you to eat what you want to eat. You know, there's a whole controversy. Should you eat sugar? Shouldn't you eat sugar? Sugar is the source of fuel for cancer cells, that kind of thing. I prescribe to that. So I went on my own anti-cancer diet. I took the herbs. I went to an energy healer. And when they told me my survival rate, I was told that it's a less than 1% chance. Wow. My immediate response was, somebody has to be the 1%. Why not me?